and I think there are men, 20s and 30s, who are ready for a good woman yeah. or for a good woman. So mm-hmm. I think that, yes, you can be at a certain stage, um, but you have to have a good understanding of what a good man is and what a good woman is woman is because if you don't because it's just like a, with a man mm-hmm. if he doesn't recognize a good woman and I, and I don't want it to seem like I'm just on the women I have seen this too where men have had good women yeah I mean women who love the <clears throat> Lord who's who's right there you know to help him and uplift him and and she's wholesome and she's and she's you know she's smart she's intelligent she has um income you know and but Nope, he saw he saw somebody on Facebook or social media yeah. who you know who was dressed the nines and body con and fine and you know and 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 that's and hey ain't nothing wrong with fine holy fine and holy you know what I mean? <laughs> nothing wrong with that ain't nothing wrong with that <laughs> ain't nothing, right ain't nothing wrong with looking good and you know and being a good woman mm-hmm. but sometimes though the men are after women who have don't have much up here but her body banging yeah so because so we both miss it sometimes women and men we miss what is a good man and what is a good woman because we're looking at what social media uh we're looking at the the physical you know we're looking at physical aspects and like i said again i always say we all want somebody who we are physically attracted to yeah of course but sometimes though we have a real skewed idea of what attraction is, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, or what what a good woman we we equate if you're 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 fine or a certain look you're a good man and if you you know a certain look that I'm not so attracted to you're not a good man mm-hmm. or a woman or vice versa, and so many men and women have lost out on a beautiful love yes because they have a social media view of what relationships are supposed to be mm. what it's supposed to look like what your mate's supposed to look like yeah yeah think about how many people yeah like you said has actually missed out you know because somebody and, and like i understand attraction is is you know because you everybody like what they like exactly but you have to think at the end of the day what really matters you know if i got sick you know is your is is your body gonna help me you know <laughs> you being you know yeah. got a big old butt is that gonna help me when i'm sick in the yeah. hospital Exactly. And I use myself as a good example that, of course, now I met my husband years ago, 30 something years ago um, at a club on the dance floor. I probably weighed half, I weighed half of what I weigh now. <laughs> but when he approached me, he approached me at the club and I was not attracted to him because he was short mm-hmm. and more stocky, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I, I, I'm 6'2". And my dream was to have somebody about six five because I love heels and I still to this day love heels. So you know I'm gonna be about six four, six five on any given day with some heels on. <laughs> so my you know my my perfect man was tall and slim with size 30, 31 race, you know 30, 28, 29 waist. You know. But then he he approached me and wanted to dance and my first thought Mm-mm, you're short. Yeah. That's the, my first thought. Mm-hmm. But then I said okay I'll dance. We danced. Went and talked, talked about two hours on the uh, right after the dance floor. Mm. Fast friendships from there. Of course, it was 20 years later, but married 20 years later. But what I'm saying is, and then when we married 20 years later, I'm about 100 pounds bigger than <laughs> who was when my husband first met me. Yeah. But to him, you know, I'm still that same beautiful girl that he saw, you know, uh, f- across the dance floor. Mm-hmm. So yeah. but what I'm saying is, by the time my husband marries me 20 years later, no, I'm not the same woman that he was attracted to. I'm not the same physically mm-hmm, that he was right. attracted to 20 years prior. Mm-hmm. He's not the same, you know, and he's like I say, shorter than me. My husband, he want to be 5'10", y'all. He want to be 5'10". <laughs> when he says he's 5'10", I'm 6'2". Mm-hmm. You know, but that's where I like to use that example for women to say, I could have loved lost out on the love of my life he could have lost out on the love of his life if we were just focusing in on that physical you know so that's why i I, you know i encourage women and men yes i understand that we all want should be and want to be attracted to our mate but open up your mind as to your perception of what's attractive Mm. What's attractive to me? My husband was in there washing the dishes one day. I said, "Oh, baby, you look so sexy standing there washing them dishes." 
So you got to open your mind more so, you know, what is attractive. It's attractive to have a woman that's got your back. It's so attractive to have a woman who's not going to spend up all the money on just self, self, self. Mm. It's attractive to have a man who goes to work or brings in an income. Um, it's attractive to have a man who honors you or respect you. You know, so you got to look at what your idea of attractiveness is because just physical, the body, that's yeah. only a certain percentage of it. And after a while, all this body is going back to the dust. That's right. <laughs> Now both were getting out of bed and he his knees was hurting and my back was hurting and we just looked at each other and bust out laughing. <laughs> and we were both trying to get to the bathroom. And I was like, okay, you go to that bathroom, I go to this one. And we bust out laughing because hey, the body's going back to the dust, you know? But the love, the love is everlasting. That's right. I, I like that because I was going to ask you about that too, because that I hear from a lot of women too, that they just refuse to settle. And, and like you said, I get, I understand the attraction, but cause some women like I could, cause like you said, with you being taller, I've mostly tall women like tall men. Yes. You know, but because you looked past that, because some women will argue, I don't know he's short. I don't care. I've but, heard, and I know women mm -hmm. who say, I don't care. God can bless me. With everything I want in a man that's six four, and yes, yeah. very true, yeah. very true. And I know a lot of times, you know, especially if you're spiritual, you think you say, um, he, "God will give me the desires of my heart." Mm -hmm. And hey, if he's and he can be, and my desires, he's got you know six figures, six four, you know, and this, and true, true enough. And you may be waiting a lot longer than you might have would have waited. Or sometimes the or sometimes God has to change the desires of your heart in order to give you what he has for you. Mm. So yes, he can give you the desires of your heart. Or and he will give you the desires of your heart. But sometimes God has to change your desires because the desires of my heart was a man at least six four. <laughs> yeah. and, and a little slimmer. Because my husband, like I say, even though I met him 30 some years ago, he was he's was smaller than, but you know, he was he's broad and mm -hmm. you know I, I you know, I was thinking I was going to give me tall drink of water. <laughs> tall, dark drink of water. It's like, he's about my complexion. I want him to be black, black. Black and black, black. <laughs> You'll see never white teeth. That's what I like. <laughs> but that's not what I got. Right. You know? And so, but God changed the desires of my heart mm -hmm. to match who he had for me. And then, and then the attraction was there initially because he was handsome. Yeah. But the attraction grew. Because mm -hmm. my attraction was not about how he just how he looked. My mm -hmm. attraction grew because he adores me, mm -hmm. because of how he treats me, because mm -hmm. of his generosity. Yeah, and you know now he's he's he he he, he looked just as good as anybody else to me or better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Because y'all got that internal love. It's it's exactly. deeper than just the physical. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I love that. That is so good. Yeah. So ladies, just consider. You know, Just, because I hear a lot of times how this, you know, because women say men get to men get to uh, choose what they want, you know, and it's like we I believe we all kind of compromise to a degree. Yes. You know, yes. I, believe to, I do believe to a degree. Yeah. And, uh, it, to me, it just comes down to what do you desire most? Do you mm -hmm. desire a, a, a loving mate, a partner? Um, who's you know going to you know be there with you for you grow older with you and y'all build together or do you prefer to hold out to all those physical financial things and there's nothing wrong with holding out right but as opposed to building at age 30 maybe 40 you might be building you might get somebody in retirement <laughs> you might be, you know and so not to say it it won't happen or it right. can't happen for you. But at how long are you going to, how long will it be before you, you know, you miss your, you, you miss your blessing or how long will it be before your blessing come around? Cause mm -hmm. something, you know, we can stall, we can stall our own blessings. Yep. That's just like, even when it's not relationship, just certain things in our life. Um, it may happen for us in a, years down the line, mm -hmm. but we, but it was, we blocked it. Yep. We blocked out our blessing or we held up our own blessings. Mm -hmm. Wrestling. You know, we know there's a story, a biblical story, yep. you know, where the blessing was being held up because there was a fight. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes 
we holding up and blocking our own blessing because there's that fight. Mm. I, I want him to be this and I want him to be that. And like, okay, you may get it, but there you holding up the blessing because you won't let go and let God. Mm. You know? Fighting. But it's, but it's 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 your prerogative. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, how long you how long you want to wait? And so I've heard women say, I'll wait. And mm. that's that's good too. Yeah. Yeah. That's good too. You know, but to me, waiting should be for certain principles. You know, I was 38 when I got married. Mm. I got 38, but I was waiting on certain principles. I wasn't waiting on a certain look. Mm. And so Big it's difference. okay to wait. It's your prerogative to wait. And if you want to, but wait for certain principles. Yes. And, but not waiting for a certain look. Mm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, there was something I was going to say about that, uh, about the weight. Oh, yeah, because when you look at everything, say, from a pie chart perspective, if you look at statistics, um, the average man is probably like five foot eight, maybe the average man. You know, so if you want somebody that's six, three, the chances of you running into somebody six, three, it takes a lot of the pie chart away. It takes maybe, you know, 70 percent of men. So when you take away the ones that are incarcerated, you take away the ones that are already married, you take away the yes. ones who uh, don't desire a woman. Yep. Your pie chart is just getting smaller, and then now now you're looking for the ones within that the six over six feet. The out of the whole chart, the, the pool of men you're looking for is in there. Yep. Yep. And you so weigh out of location. Up, like you said, you gotta open up that pie chart. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, you want somebody that got abs and somebody that's that's that makes six figures. By the time you're done, you ain't getting none of the pie. You got a sliver, <laughs> a sliver of hope. <laughs> a, I don't even know if sliver is enough. Nah. Barely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I say I say that when when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll say, God, bring me who you have for me. Be it unto me, Lord. Yes, yes. <laughs> but a lot of times we ain't sick and tired. We're not sick and tired enough. That's true. That's true. Last question. Uh, great conversation. What do you think hinders men from becoming husbands? You know, because you got guys that they play the field all day. You know, because you, in order to be marriage material, you at least want to be married. <laughs> right. Exactly. I say what hinders men from becoming husbands. I um, hope the women don't get mad at me, but us women, <laughs> we hinder the men from becoming her, from wanting to become husbands because of the way, the energy and the vibe that you know that we put out. Mm. Um, a man wants. For the most part, I believe most mature men, yes. mature men, we're not talking about grown boys, right. but most mature men want to be married. Mm -hmm. And what prevents them from wanting to become husbands is how they feel that that marriage is going to go, how they it's that it's whether that woman is going to be controlling. She's too much energy. It's too much um, responsibility on it's too much responsibility on me to make her happy mm -hmm. um, yeah it's feeling as if I got to be responsible for her joy responsible for her happiness responsible for her self esteem you know um, and we put too much responsibility on a man for our for our emotions for I have, and you know, we used to call marriage, you know, like a, a, an institution. Yeah. Marriage is an institution. And I always say this that a man doesn't want to feel like he's institutionalized. <laughs> and I feel like that's what he sees in marriage. Like, I'm going to be institutionalized. Mm. It, it's binding. It's like, I, I feel like I'm going to be in a jacket, you know, yeah. one of them jackets. Yeah, straight jacket. And I think when a man meets a woman who makes him feel free mm. or thinks he's going to be free with her, and I don't mean free to 
I don't mean free to cheat. Right, of course. Free to have sister wives. <laughs> you know, I don't mean free. <laughs> I don't mean free in that aspect. Right. But free emotionally. Um, this woman is going to uplift me. She's going to encourage me, but she's going to be a partner. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do this thing together. I'm not responsible for her. And she's not trying to be responsible for me. We run men away by trying to be responsible for them. Mm. And we don't know that because we think we're being loving and nurturing. And a, yeah. But a man don't want a woman to be responsible for him. Like I said, I'm not talking about grown boys, grown mm -hmm. boys. I mean, grown men who are yeah. grown boys, mm -hmm. they'll let you be responsible for them. Yeah. But to me, a man, a mature man, he doesn't want this woman responsible for him. And he doesn't want, he understands his responsibilities in a relationship. He understands his responsibilities to cover, responsibility to provide. He were, but he don't want to feel like he's responsible for you and all your emotions and all of your, and, and everything that comes with that. He don't want to be responsible in making you be a woman. Yeah. He wants the woman to be, he wants that woman as a, you know, in a partnership. I don't want to be responsible for making you a woman. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to be responsible for that. Yeah. So, you know, I thought I was marrying a woman. I don't want mm. to have to make a woman or build a woman, mm. you know, and, a, and, and, I, and I'm, I want to marry a wife, a woman who is a wife. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of times we as women, we hinder men from wanting to become husbands because like I said, a man doesn't want to be in an institution. He wants to be in a partnership. And so if he feels like being in this marriage is going to be like being in an institution, like I'm locked up, yeah. locked down. Yeah. Then, but if he meets a woman that says, wow, she doesn't make me feel locked down, locked up. Um, I, I'm free to be me. I'm free not to walk on eggshells. I'm not, I'm free not to have to worry about stepping on. Um, I, I don't have to build her up to, you know, it's like we can we build each other up, yes. yeah. But you know, I don't know if you, I don't know if you, you know, you've seen that or or experienced that, or other men have talked about that. But he has to expend so much energy building her up. I've been and, there, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we hinder, I, I, we hinder, we hinder men from wanting to be husbands. Mm, that's good. But, yeah. Ugh, this might go viral. You might catch heat for this. <laughs> We're doing, and we're gonna have some people mad. We have some people mad at me, but that's okay. They're gonna be that's, in the comment section after they see this. We, and this is the thing: it's always single mad women who say, "Why we got to do this? Yeah. Why we got to change? Why we got to?" Because God has built us that men need us. God says, yes, "God had." God had done created Adam and gave him everything. And there was still one thing missing. There was still one thing missing <clears throat> that Adam needed. And it was a woman. Yep. And so God has built, it's been like that from the beginning of time. That's why God has, but we don't realize that. Mm -hmm. We don't realize that, that this is what God has placed in. This is what God has given. He's placed in us for you all. Yes. And so, and so we are the ones who, I don't want to use that word, not, does not control, but we're the ones who are instrumental and, and exactly. And so we're, we're all, you know, sometimes single women sometimes have the toughest time getting them to have a mind change because they say, why we have to do this? Why we have to do this? Why we, why do I have to make him feel this way? Or what? Yeah. It's reciprocal. Believe me, if you make him feel that way, you're going to get what you want. And if you're not getting what you want, move on. He's not the one. That's right. He's not the one. Mm. But, but you're going to eventually come in. You're going to eventually connect with the one that what you give him, you're going to give get back major. Easy, easy, yeah. So yeah, yeah if you, if you are being, uh, you know, you want to move on, and that's cool. But just know when you go back to that pie chart, you're gonna have that little sliver hole. <laughs> little sliver, very. I mean, less than a sliver. <laughs> less than a sliver. <laughs> yeah. Because we are taking away all of our, you know, all of our options by 
you know, telling God what we want. Yeah. What if, what, just what if we listened and said, God, give me who you want mm. and, and mean it with all sincerity. Mm. But we so busy telling God what we want. We, I want him to be tall, dark, handsome, six figure, this, that, you know, I want all of this thing. And what about listening to what God wants to give us? Yeah. I want a man with no kids. And he are he you, you in your thirties talking about you want a man with no kids. Exactly. Exactly. He's gonna come with some stuff. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. You got your stuff. He's got his stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. But long as he but long as he is showing you that he's wanting to learn, change, grow, and he wants to partner with you and grow mm-hmm. with you and learn with you and change with you. And it's reciprocal. Yes. And you can't worry about all the the stuff that was on your list. Yes. Uh, amen. Because I will say that one thing I really um, enjoyed about my wife was, you know, she was she was there, like the energy was reciprocal. Yes. You know I'm saying we had the mutual interest and, and always wanting to have those conversations. <clears throat> and that's why I was like, you know what? I like her energy because when for, for for people who chase people, I I don't know if if people are attracted to that. Like the chase. no, they're okay. not. Okay, they're okay. not. Mm-hmm. No, I would say now as women, let me put it this way: as women, we are attracted to the chase if the chase doesn't cross over into thirstiness. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. But as far as men. To me, men are not attracted to the chase. Yeah. They are not attracted to women chasing them. Yeah. It, it, that right. may last a week or so, but after that, yeah. he's not attracted to the chase. Mm, yeah. Women, I would say we're more attracted to the chase as mm. long as the chase doesn't become creepy, out of bounds, or, <laughs> you know, you're like you're real thirsty. <laughs> but men, but what I tell women though, Men are not attracted to your your thirst, and they're not attracted to your the chase. Yeah. As a matter of fact, not only are you they not attracted, you're repelling them. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they they lose interest. They lose yeah. interest if you do too much chasing because now you're starting to be like institutionalized again. Mm, locking them, yeah, trying yeah. to lock them down, and y'all ain't yeah, even you trying to lock you trying to lock me down, and that's why a lot of men don't seem to want to be married because, like again, I said, seem to want to be married mm-hmm. is because they don't want to be locked down. And when I say that, I don't mean that they want to um, date all these other women, uh, but it's like you're restricting my freedom. I got to explain to you everything minute by minute, where I was, what I was doing, why why I called you back 10 minutes later than I said, or, you know, it's now I feel locked down and locked in and it's institutionalized. I, I'm not free um, to, to, to express myself. I'm not free to, uh, you know, just to be me. Yeah. Because yeah. we're trying to make you, we're trying to make you into the man we want to marry. Mm, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And that's why it's important to know your attachment style too. You know, are you an avoidant? Are you secure? Uh, are you anxious? You know, because if you're anxious type, you're always going to be trying to text. What you doing? Where you at? You know, you're just anxious. You're always worried about everything, you know, so you need to know your attachment style, uh, yeah, that whole thing. Exactly. So, exactly. Huh. Deidre, yeah, this... Now, you meet somebody with the same <clears throat> uh, same attachment style and that's cool with them. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, if you meet someone with a, if, uh, with a different type of attachment style, mm-hmm. you're running them the other way. this has been a a wonderful uh episode of it's scary to remarry and this topic of trying to help our sisters out um and even for brothers i think this is important for men as well so they can kind of get a vantage point kind of see uh you know what the things that women go through uh, because i'm sure it's not easy for women to try to find somebody who you know compatible i'm sure it got to be tough out here but i do i do want to uh acknowledge you for uh being married uh 20 years over 20 years 
I know, no, I've um, been I've been knowing my husband thirty. I've been knowing him thirty years, but thirty five years, right? Mm. But no, um, April will be seventeen years of marriage. April, April 17. seventeen years. Okay, well, I I, I want to acknowledge you for going on seventeen years of marriage and uh, fighting the good fight of faith and building people up and staying consistent through the YouTube channel. You have helped me uh, time and time again watching your content. So I want to acknowledge you for that. And just stay in the course and uh, just want to acknowledge you for your wisdom uh, and just for helping out society and culture. I think people need to hear more from you, even though I know you're dropping content all the time, but I wish we could give you a bullhorn. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So you can continue to drop them gems because there's so many dysfunctional channels out here that we need voices like you that's out here. So I want to acknowledge you for those things. So continue to uh, do what you're doing. Any closing comments before we get out of here? Thank you for this opportunity. Um, one thing I want to say before I close is because I know I'm hard, sometimes I'm hard on the women, but like I say, tough, but the it's the tough love yes. because yes. I really love and respect women. Mm -hmm. And I think we're so awesome. And God has just, you know, made us, we're just, we're just beautiful. You know, we're, we're, we're awesome. We're beautiful. And there's so much in us. we got so much love to give. And when we give that love, it's beneficial. It's beneficial to men. You know, it's beneficial yeah. to our children. It's beneficial. So I, I know I'm a little tough, you know, on the ladies, but it's all out of love of um, because I want you to have the love that you deserve, have the love that you desire, um, to be able to give all the love that you have that you can give it to someone who will appreciate it mm -hmm. and who will will reciprocate, you know, at, in the relationship. And that's just my heart desire, just to uplift women and to let them know, because a lot of women don't know that they are awesome, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that they uh, deserve the love that they desire in their hearts and they don't have to just take the crumbs. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to say that. I also, you know, just invite you that you can find me over at So So Bless One on uh, the platforms of YouTube um, and TikTok and um, where IG. IG is the main place. I, I do I do a few little TikToks here and there, but um, over on Instagram, so so bless one, and here on YouTube. So I invite you to be a part of the blessed place. Check us out, um, especially Monday night, nine thirty Eastern Standard Time. I have live, and so I'm going to be doing a live tonight, and where we um, talk about all things love, dating, relationship, and marriage. Yeah. So thank you, yeah. Sean, so much for this um, for this opportunity to come before your audience and to collab with you. It's always a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. And you always have great questions and great uh, conversations. So thank you. Yes, no problem. Bravehearts community, you heard it here first. Make sure you go connect with Deidre. Like I said, I, I've been connected to her for years, uh, even after rebranding, still had to follow her because I'm like, I got to get some wisdom. I got to get some more help out here in these streets. <laughs> so, uh, and also make sure the podcast, if you're listening to this on the podcast, make sure you leave a, a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. If you don't, you can't watch it on YouTube, uh, leave a rating and review there. I would love to hear what you have to say about this episode and make sure that you share this with a friend or family, someone who might need this. This is Sean Heineman at It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly with special guests. Deidre Hillary ask you. Ask you. <laughs> Deidre uh, Hillary ask you. <laughs> Deidre Hillary ask you. Brave Forest community, take care.